Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. Brought to you by Blue Sky Business Consulting. We discuss five questions in about 15 minutes. Hi again, everyone. Hope you're having a great day and a great week. We are excited once again to have a wonderful guest all the way from the San Francisco Bay Area in California. This is Shivi Agarwal, and she is the founder and CEO of Silicon Valley Web Solutions. Shivi, thank you so much for taking time to join us on the podcast today. And what would you like the audience to know about your business and what you're working on? So first of all, Sean, thank you so much for having me here. It's my pleasure. Um, Silicon Valley, it's a website designing and a digital marketing company. We help small, mid-sized businesses create their online presence end-to-end. And my target audience are mainly the businesses who cannot afford to have these services in-house. So we are very cost-effective, plus we custom tailor uh, our approach based on their budget, their needs, and their requirement basis. Well, that's fantastic because there are obviously a lot of small businesses that uh, probably never will need to have an in-house marketer, web designer, and all those other pieces. So the fact that, the fact that you can provide all of those is uh, tremendously valuable, to say the least. So fantastic. All right. Well, let's get started with our questions. Our first question, uh, Shivi, as you've been building your business, is there a challenge that you've overcome that you're especially proud of? Actually, many, but I would say in the entrepreneurship startup journey, you come across to many challenges and hurdle your way. But the one challenge I really can think of on top of my mind is to find my niche. It took me a while to find out my target audience my customer segment and the demographics. And we were randomly pitching, targeting clients, and we were lately realized it's not really working out. So to find the niche, the right customer segment, it took me a while. So I would say that was the most, most challenging hurdle uh, which came my way. Wow, that's a great point because that is a difficult hurdle to overcome. It, it's Sometimes people get too narrow and sometimes they're too broad. And either way, you really have to refine that and find your niche and make sure you've got enough of a market there that you're not too narrow. So I love that. Well, congratulations on overcoming that challenge because that is, that's a big challenge. So well done. Mm -hmm. Question number two, as a leader, what can a leader do to help foster creativity within their team? I would say it's very important as a leader to believe in your team. Mm. Trust them. And I strongly believe in bottom up, bottom up approach where you listen to their ideas, you listen to them because the way they think, maybe you don't think. We all think very differently. We all are very unique personalities and creations. So believing in them and putting trust in them, unleash them will bring the best out of them. So I think that's my approach and that's how I function my company. That's a great approach. I love that approach because uh, and I, I like that you use the word believe, believe in your people. And I hear the word, when I ask that question, I hear the word trust quite a bit, which is also very important and you used it as well. But that word believe has a different feel to it. And I like that you use that word, I believe in my people. So I think that's fantastic. All right, question number three, how can a leader help the team members or employees to trust each other? And that's very important to create the healthy environment inside the company. I would say, again, if you believe in them and if you provide them all the resources and they think like their re leader is always available for them and whenever they need, wherever they need, if you make yourself available and listen to them, what they need to get the work done, what they require to go above and beyond, and deliver their 100%. I think if you set that feeling, if you create that bond with the team and team members, I think they will treat your company like their company. And a lot of leaders, I mean, uh, they have a different approach, but like I have mentioned in my earlier answer, bottom of approach is really working out for me. And I will, I will follow and I'll continue doing it. Wow, that's great. Some great insights there because it is difficult sometimes if you've got some conflict within the team for those members to learn to trust each other. But uh, by, by you demonstrating that and allowing that bottom up approach, as you talk about, that really goes a long ways. So some great insights there. Thank you for sharing those. 
Question number four. Um, over the years, I suspect uh, most, of, most of us have experienced failure in some measurement or degree, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you have as well. But is there a fa failure or something that you perceived as a failure that you turned into a win? Yes, actually many, because in the startup journey, you learn by doing it. And a startup or entrepreneurship, I strongly believe you cannot learn. No matter from Ivy League college, you are doing MBA or entrepreneurship course, you cannot learn. It's really a mindset. So I would say in this six, seven years of journey, we, we, we have faced many failures and successes. So I can think of one incident which happened with me. I assigned one project manage, manager to one of my account and that account was one of the hospitality customer we were working with. And somehow they did not get clicked, my manager and the client. Uh, so the situation reached at the point where they were really frustrated and we were about to lose the account. And it takes a whole village to convert, convince the client, especially in this challenging market of Bay Area. So I chimed in, I communicated, I heard my, my manager's story, I heard other side of the story. And based on that, I changed the manager uh, and I offered additional services to my client and somehow that's how I kind of cooled down the situation. And we, I would say that was a win for me because that customer is now my long-term client. Mm. I love that. And Chibi, I love the fact that you emphasize that you listen. You listen to both sides of it there and you wanted to kind of come to some mutual ground and understanding and obviously you made a change and that has worked out really well. I love that you went above and beyond. I love that you said, we're going to have to offer some extra services here to help keep the client and keep them happy. And now you have a success story. So that is a fantastic example of what happens sometimes when something's not going right, some ideas on how we can fix that. So thank you so much for sharing that. All right, our final question. Shimi, tell us a little bit about your first job. Well, that's a very interesting question. And I have great memories about it. And I would love to share Right after my MBA from Silicon Valley, San Jose, I was clueless which route to take, what to do, what not to do. And I kind of discussed with a few of my friends and they said, you know, whatever appeals to you the most. I was like, I don't know. That's why we are talking. So I joined a business analyst consulting based out of Bay Area. I thought maybe they will train me and then they will find me a job in Fortune 100 company. But surprisingly, they ended me hiring back office. So that was that was the great turning point and the first time when I got my business card printed that that day I was on cloud 9. So <laughs> I learned a lot from that job. I spent I think less than 1 year there. I played multiple roles there. I was super duper excited. And yeah, I think those memories I will never ever forget. Oh, that's fantastic. I love to hear the enthusiasm, especially about getting your business card. I love that. It's like cloud <laughs> is something, and, and uh, you're, you're much younger than I am. I'm an old guy, but uh, there is something about um, almost like a rite of passage to have a, just a business card that says, I, I need to give you this. So mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. All right. Shivi, thank you again so much for taking time out of your schedule to join me on the podcast here. How can people find you? They can always visit my website, www.siliconvalleywebsolution.com. And on my website, I have my contact details. They can approach us if they have any questions, concerns, if they would like to schedule a consultation. All the details are there. Fantastic. Thank you. And once again, we thank everybody for taking time to join us on the podcast this week and every week. And we hope to continue to support all leadership and team development efforts. So thanks so much for everybody joining us and have a great day. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. We also invite you to follow or subscribe to our podcast wherever you may be listening or watching. Is your business thriving? Go to tbs-score.com to find out. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.